Hands up shaking just to let you know now you've got First of all, I'm so pumped you're bringing the tour back to Canada. Do you by chance remember one of your first tour stops in our country? Yes. Yes. Well, Van was Vancouver the first one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. At the beginning of 2001, we came straight from Australia. We were extremely jet-lagged, I yeah. do you remember that. <laughs> Making something eco-friendly or kind of trying to reduce your carbon impact for anybody even trying to do that in the smallest level is not easy. What's been the biggest challenge for trying to, you know, make a tour more sustainable, economically? Tran transport is the biggest challenge. <laughs> Our transport and then the audience transport. Everything else is kind of not easy, but has been a kind of a joy to assemble. It's like, oh, we can power this by this and we can offset this with that. And we can. And then you come to the sort of column of transport and fuel, and that's where we're still struggling. But we're very open about that and hopefully even by a couple of years time that will improve somehow but we're still a ways away from you know flying around on a solar airplane and everyone hoverboarding to the show that would be really great <laughs> On social media, you posted maybe a month ago about some studio action happening. Yeah. I don't know what you can tell me. Can you tell me about the creative process? What's happening? <laughs> yes, we're we're um, we're finishing a an album called Moon Music, um, which is the second Music of the Spheres uh, volume. Um, but that won't come out for a little bit. Uh, we might start playing some songs at some point this year. Um, that's, is that the answer you're looking for? Yeah, sure. I'm like, yeah. I got really, <laughs> but I heard not finished. You're finishing it. Like I can play xylophone. I can play three guitar chords and I can sing out a tune. Like, are you open to having some guest features on it? Maybe secretly? Well, that's, that's more than me. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're overqualified. What's the problem? <laughs> you're going to make us look bad. <laughs> oh, this I'm is so the trouble excited. with having, we have some amazing guests on albums recently and tours. But it's always slightly deflating because you realize, oh, this person's so much more wow. talented. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like her, her being the primary example. She's oh, been on yeah. tour with us a lot. And I think she's on the dates with us in yeah. September. And when she comes on stage, you just have to sort of <laughs> take your hat off because it's just a different level of yeah. talent. She is wonderful. A lot of things have done. Was all I remember being in Mexico a couple of years ago and I heard somebody performing yellow in Spanish and it just mm. showed me the reach of your music. Where are some of the most random places you've ever heard your songs? I had a thing the other day with a TV show. I, I, Will, our drummer, deals with TV syncs and stuff. So I never know where they'll be in. <laughs> and I was watching a TV show called Slow Horses, which is really good. And the scene was this couple driving along and his cassette player was broken or CD player was broken and would only play this Coldplay song. And his girlfriend was getting really mad, but he liked them. And I thought that's very sort of accurate reflection of our place in the world. Some people really love it. Some people are like, turn this off. But then, then I kept watching the show because you know, I've trained myself to be able to handle differences of opinion. And then it came back again in the, Gnarly of the oh. show and both times it really took me by surprise so there's always that and then um yeah if you see i mean especially with the internet now they pop up in the strangest places and it's just wonderful oh. i was in an art gallery in new york and um and i was walking through and i was like that's a nice that's a nice string part I don't, it's a great song <laughs> and and it took me about literally about half an hour and i was like Oh, hang on a minute that was like a, a b-side from 2005 or something like that you never even you leave the <laughs> i don't studio. think i'd listen to it i don't think i'd listen to it i think you leave then. the studio for b-side <laughs> not a single i'm not playing no, exactly That's you. <laughs> i remember kind of hearing how sometimes on off days you'd play football or soccer here in canada with some locals or just in general when you had downtime 
Mm -hmm. Do you still do this? Because like our women's national team recently won gold at the Olympics and I'm sure they'd love to play a little game. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we, uh, uh, less, less so. <laughs> <laughs> we've, um, we've sort of had to put that on the side burner or the no burner. We've stopped burning that at all. It's we're too, the, the honest answer is we're a bit too old now. And the Canadians women's national team would realize in about, three seconds like oh my god we've wasted our whole day yes <laughs> but, but, but they're very invited to our show if they want to come let's you arrange that Johnny okay I will I will yeah. And, uh, yeah but we played it we played a game I think we played a game in about I mean it's probably about 10 years ago against the crew and I think about four people died. ended up we <laughs> <laughs> So there was people hobbling around the next the next day in the concert. Was like, oh, I don't think we can do this anymore. Yeah. So I think it's become more like Uno. 